Hello, I'm Father Joseph Bertha, here, standing here in the sanctuary of St. John the Baptist, Byzantine Catholic Church in Bayonne, New Jersey, and I'm happy to present to you and delighted to be speaking on the seventh day of the Mercy Novena. Today, bring to me the souls who especially venerate and glorify my mercy and immerse them in my mercy. I was so delighted when I read this prayer every year and every time I'm praying the Mercy Chaplet to think about the word veneration because it reminds me of a word that we use frequently every time I come into church. In fact, we have to pray in front of the icon of our Lord. I'm in front of the icon of our Blessed Mother right now in our church, uh, the wide wings of heaven and containing Emmanuel Jesus in her womb. But we come into church and do prayers in front of the icon screen. And one prayer in particular uses the word veneration. We venerate your sacred icon, O gracious Lord, and beg forgiveness for, for our offenses, O Christ our God. For you of your own good will ascended the cross in your human nature to deliver from the enemy's bondage those whom you created. Therefore, we gratefully cry out to you by coming to save the world, O Savior, you have filled all with joy. Now, as we all know, veneration means to bow, to honor, to give glory. But we in the Byzantine church are always centered on an icon or an image. And so, too, I'd like to speak a little bit about the icon of our divine mercy of our Lord that's found in Vilnius and enshrined in St. Michael's Church there today. An image that Jesus, our Lord, asks, and I'm reaching over here to, to, re to re read for you the exact words of our Lord that he gave to St. Faustina. He said, paint an image according to the pattern you see with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. I desire that this image be venerated first in your chapel and throughout the world. I promise that the soul that will venerate this image will not perish. I also promise victory over its enemies already here on the face of the earth, especially at the hour of death. I myself will defend it as my own glory. And that's found in the diary 4748. So our Lord is giving instructions to poor St. Faustina how to paint this icon, and she, together with Blessed Michael Sapochko, engage uh, Eugene Kazimierski to paint that in 1933, and they put it up in the gate on Mercy Sunday, the Sunday opposite Pascha, as we celebrate today, and we read the Gospel of Thomas being present with the apostles and our Lord appearing, even though the door was locked. It's a Passover or a Paschal image that's being portrayed for us because actually, Blessed Michael Sapochko tells us, Blessed Michael Sapochko, an ordinary diocesan priest, not from any kind of particular order, was the one who was entrusted with explaining this image to us. And he says that this is Jesus coming, our Lord, coming through the door, even though it was locked. And that's very significant that we look to our Jewish ancestry to understand the meaning of this passage through a doorway of death. Our Lord's precious blood covers the lintel of the door, just as the Passover lamb's blood marks the house of a faithful. I mean, this is just mind-bogglingly um, fascinating to me that we have a call back to the Jewish understanding of Passover, Pascha. This is what this day of our Lord's resurrection really means. You notice I'm not using the word Easter. Easter is a kind of a weak word to describe this great feast that our Lord's triumph over death. So it's, you'll hear me referring more to Pascha, Paschal services, and the feast of our Lord's Passover. Our Lord is passing over by his death. His heart is pierced with a lance and pours forth 
blood and water, which are the two sacraments that a priest gives. And when we look at the image and we venerate the image of our Lord of mercy, we notice that he's wearing a white alb. And it's really a linen piece of alb. That could be understood as what the priest wears when he hears confessions and when he performs the sacraments. And it goes back to the Jewish high priest wearing this white robe uh, from head to toe made out of linen, which is a very expensive process. And he wears that into the Holy of Holies when he is going to ask for forgiveness of sins. So our Lord is being depicted in this image and he asks that to be done according to this way, um, according to a Jewish high priest. And we hear him referred to as the eternal high priest according to Melchizedek in the letter to the Hebrews. None of the four gospels ever call our Lord a priest. It's just amazing to me. Um, you have to go read the letter to the Hebrews and our Lord is constantly called the great high priest, the priest who offers up ransom for our sins. And I just think it's so wonderful that our Lord and St. Faustina chose blessed Michael Sapochko, Father Sapochko, to model the priest in this painting when Mr. Kazimierski was painting this originally. So he had Father Sapochko standing there in a priestly alb, or as the Hebrew word is katona. Katona is the robe that the high priest would wear. He would bow down and ask the Lord for forgiveness of all the sins of his, of his congregation of the whole world when he was in the holy temple in Jerusalem. And so too, Jesus, our blessed Lord, was wrapped in a linen shroud for the remission of sins. Isn't that interesting how we say these things? We say specifically it was a linen shroud that he was wrapped in. It carries that detail, that significance of being a priest. And then we read in the diary how our Lord says to St. Faustina, Father Michael is a priest after my own heart. I just think that's so wonderful to think of an ordinary diocesan priest who has the power to give out six of the seven sacraments while wearing that priestly white alb. He forgives sins. He, he gives out the Holy Eucharist, precious body and blood of our Lord so frequently. I recall all my times that I spent when I was up in Buffalo and had the privilege of being at St. Luke's Mission of Mercy, hearing the marathon confessions, we used to call them, sitting for hours dressed as a priest, hearing people's confessions and giving them the grace of God's mercy in that sacrament. So this is what's really being depicted in this image that we venerate um, so beautifully as part of our mercy devotion. Jesus, our Lord, calls it the vessel for perceiving and receiving his mercy here on the face of the earth. So we give honor and glory to our blessed Savior as we continue to venerate his glorious image that he's given. He's given us a visualization of this eternal sacrament. And he speaks to us about the priesthood being eternal. And as a conclusion to my talk that I'm giving to you today, I would like to recall the mind of the deceased priests that we have in our lives. The priest who baptized you, the priest who gave you the sacrament of her first Holy Communion, any of the priests that have ministered to you that have passed into eternity. Don't forget to pray for them and ask for their intercession. Priests are ordained for eternity. It's different than the sacrament of matrimony, the holy mystery of matrimony. We hear our Lord saying, you don't have marriage in eternity, but you do have 
the holy priesthood which was offered for us. So I conclude my little session with you today by offering and imparting my priestly blessing to you, to each and every one of you. May the heavenly mercy of our God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you always, now and ever and forever. Amen.